here tonight at NH Kids. And I hope you're in for a wild ride because that's exactly what this is gonna be. So let's get started right now. Welcome to NH Kids. 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 Remember guys, this month we're talking about faith. Faith is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. And I want you to see right now this video called Live Loud. Check it out. How does your favorite story end? Wait, first, how does your favorite story begin? In a world where a kid who has something to learn, something to discover, this kid finds unexpected friends. They head out on an adventure and face some tough challenges. Then when things are the darkest, when all hope seems lost, something, someone, comes through to save the day. And everyone celebrates! Now, Think about this. We are hardwired to love stories because each one of us is living one. We're all human and we all make mistakes. But sometimes the road ahead can be so rough, we don't know how to fix the problems we face. But we do know the times we've seen God at work. We know he sent a hero right into the middle of our story, God's own son, Jesus. And we know that when we follow Jesus, God promised an ending more incredible than anything we can imagine. Wherever we go, He goes with us too. When we live out our story with hope and faith, others can see God at work in us. That's why faith is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Isn't that awesome? Through the way we live our life, people are reading a story of faith. <laughs> And they read that story by the way that we live, the words that we say, and the things that we do. So I want you to ask yourself a question tonight, families. How can the way that you live help other people know Jesus? I want you to get together and talk about that and really think how the words that we say, the things that we do, even the little things can help other people see Jesus in us. So answer this question together. How can you help others know Jesus?
did you miss me? It is I, Professor Marty Pants. And here is Bob. Say hi, Bob. Did you hear him? You not hear him? You not hear him? Bob, say it one more time. They, are, they cannot listen. Volume up. You hear him? Okay, good, good. If you speak chicken, you hear him. If not, you not hear him. I'm so sorry. But I am here, and if you saw me on Sunday, hello again. It is so good to see you. I am going to be reminding you of God's word today because that is how we explode the brains. You know that is what happened to me, and I could not get that back inside, so that is what happened to my hair. <laughs> Bob, he still loves me. Now, we are going to explode your mind today with a scripture picture, my friends. So turn on your brain and get ready to learn. Now, you know I always show you some very complex code, and so today I've made it hard. If you were with me on Sunday, then you saw a little bit of this, and we will test your memory, moms and dads and little brothers and big sisters. So, here we go. Number one, I will put it up for you. That's my magic. All right, I will put it up on the screen for you, the device, your tablet, your phony, whatever you have, I want you to look at this verse. Now we know the first one is pointing up and Bob will tell me, yes, Bob, you are very smart. He says the first one is God. So it point up to God that have an S. So that is God. Can you say that? God. Very good. Oh, very good. Now the next one is a G. A G, like G whiz. Okay? But no whiz today. We just say G. And then we have the joggers. I like to jog. I like to move it, move it. Wait a minute, Bob. That not be joggers. What that be? Oh yes, that be race. So if we put together G and race, we have God's grace. Wham, bam, that is right, okay. So we've got God's grace, and then I have put up Bob's hat collection. Can't you see, he has a very big head, and he likes to wear hats for a special occasion, when he do the chicken dance, when he go to Thanksgiving supper, he love to wear. So, God's grace, and then we have the hats. So that sound like has, you got it. God's grace has. Now the next one, it is very important if you're swimming. It's a lifesaver, right? So that is gonna be for save. So you see the save and the D, it is saved. God's grace has saved. Whoever is out there, you say your name. As you say your name, oh yes, that's right, okay. Now instead of saying your name, we are going to say you because God's grace has saved you. Did you know that? That is how why we can have faith in him because of his grace. God's grace has saved you and this is a very scary one so I gonna shut Bob's eyes. He get a little freaked out of really sharp stuff. So God's grace has saved you and then we have a teeny tiny B, that is right, you are a genius, kiss your brain. God's grace has saved you, B, and then I'm gonna shut Bob's eyes, I'm gonna shut his ears, I'm gonna shut his feet because he's really scared of this. This is claws, okay? And poor Bob, he have no claws, he's been declawed because he is a house chicken. So, because, you know that sound like because, yes! That is right. God's grace has saved us because light switch. <laughs> I got you. No, no, no. God's grace has saved us because of. <laughs> of, you get it because it is off. Now you need to always be turning off the light because that is what make it really hot in your house. So just sit in the dark and be cool. Okay. God's grace has saved you because of, and then it's a why. Why paddle? Because otherwise your boat's gonna go nowhere. <laughs> Just kidding. It is a or. Because of your <laughs> note. No, that's not right. What is that one? I need to ask Pastor Brett. He would tell me, tell me, think, think, think. Pastor Brett, he told me that note is an eighth. So if I put together the f, f, and the F, the F and the F, it is faith that is right. Oh, you got it. That is right. Because of your faith, 
No, I see that is the Holiday Inn, but I have no faith in the Holiday Inn. I tell you, just go camping, okay? But we're going to take off the Holiday, save the Inn, and it's because of your faith in Jesus, who is also called Christ. So let us say, because of your faith in Christ, you paddle. Nope, you are. Because of your faith in Christ, you're. And then this one is a humdinger, my friends. This next one on the next page is a humdinger, okay? Now, I had to get, first I got a, a picture of your dad's leg, and it was too hairy and too scary for kids, so I take it away. I take away, now I just got a regular leg. And on this, it is pointing to the shin. You know that part, if you get kicked there, oh, it hurts so bad. It really hurts bad. One time Bob got kicked in the shin, he cried for two days. So if we take the shin, we add the VA and the little boat, we get sail, Ve shin, and you know that sounds like salvation. Mm, so, bing, ba, bing, ba, boom, salvation. Because of your salvation, it is not because of anything we do, okay? So the next one, salvation, we have two little deers. So is it deersent? No, 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 no. What are those deers called? Think back in your mind. You are an Iowan. You know this. Think, think. They are those. That's right. Or if you know Spanish, that could be number two. All right. Salvation doesn't. <laughs> See how clever that is. Two little those. Salvation doesn't. And then Bob said he want to tell me this one because I used the picture of his comb. That is right, Bob. That is your comb for all your hairs because you are so hairy. Yes. Salvation doesn't, he says, comb is for come, and he is right. Bob, you are such a genius. Okay. Salvation doesn't come, and I don't know if you can see it if you look really close. That is a furry M, and so that is going to be from. <laughs> You get it, you get it. I like furry things. All right. It doesn't come from, and then there is my cousin. You know him? Some people think he's scary. I just call him family. All right. So it's N E, and then you know that one if you like us, the superheroes. Do you know him? He is thing. He is thing. So if you put together the N and the E, you get anything. Salvation doesn't come from anything. Oh, and there is Bob's best friend. His name is Louis. Uh, oh, don't we love Louis? He is so cute, Bob. I know, but his eyes are a little crazy. Uh, he, he's a little crazy, but we love him because he reminds us not of a sheep, not of a lamb. He stands for you. It's spelled E-W-E. You look that up later. That is a, that is a thing. Okay, so you and then Mountain Dew, which we know we always use that. It's only for dew. And then I put a picture of Jeremy Lane because he works in IT. You guess it. So we're going to say you do. IT spells it. You do it. It's. Don't be scared, Bob. It is not a snake. It is just is. Okay? You do. It is God's present. Just kidding. Gift. Okay. It is God's gift. That is what grace is all about. That is what salvation is all about. Now, you guys know last time I tell you that when we talk about Ephesians, we think of a turkey. Because remember, Ephesus is in Turkey, and that is where Ephesians was. It all makes sense. Plus, that is Bob's cousin, and he likes to be in the video. Okay. So, Ephesians 2. Eight. Bob, you have eight toes? Yes, you do. Okay, Ephesians 2, 8. 2, 8. Thank you, Bob. You're such a good sport. So remember this verse, okay? Ephesians 2, 8 says, God's grace has saved you because of your faith in Christ. Your salvation doesn't come from anything you or Bob or I do, even though I am awesome. It is God's gift. That means that God's grace is what saves you. When you have faith, you can believe that your salvation doesn't depend on how good you are or how bad you are or how beautiful you are like Bob. It depends on you believing in Jesus. And I am so glad for that. I heard next that we're going to be worshiping and you bet me and Bob, we're going to be getting our praise on. So you stand up and let's do this thing.
is my fate, this is my focus All of my days, I know where my hope is I live it loud, I shout the chorus Because I know, oh you're always for us And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will believe, believe And even when it's hard for me to see, to see I will trust in you, I will believe And keep on looking This is my focus All of my days I know where my hope is I live it loud I shot the chorus Because I know Oh, you're always for us And even when it's hard for me to see To see I will trust in you I will believe, believe And even when it's hard for me to see To see I will trust in you I will believe And keep on Tired or sleep, you're always faithful to me in every. 
Everything you begin, you will complete it You never tire or sleep, you're always faithful to me In everything you begin, you will complete it Oh, you're never gonna quit working on me Oh, making me all that I can be I'll keep on trying Hey guys, I love worshiping together with you. And I even love singing Christmas music with you. And you know, that time will be here before we know it. It's halfway through. So I hope you're back in the Christmas spirit today and pulled out some of your Christmas clothes because we're gonna play a very Christmassy game in just a minute. But before we do, I have a very exciting announcement for you. And that is just like the youth did a few weeks ago, we kids are going to be doing an unconventional kids give day for BGMC. And so here's the skinny. Here's all the good stuff, the juicy stuff, the good news. Now I'm gonna be challenging 10 kids, at least 10, to raise $100 in the month of August for BGMC. Now if this is something that God puts on your heart to do, and I want you to ask him, ask him what he wants you to do. Maybe it's $100, maybe it's more than that. You know, the sky is the limit when we have faith and we trust in God and know that he can do great things through us. So I'm looking for at least 10 kids that can raise $100 in the month of August. And if that's you, I want you to send me a quick message. I want your mom and dad to text me, call me, send me an email, a homing pigeon, a sign in the sky. I want you to tell me these simple words, I'm in for BGMC, okay? And by doing that, we are all on a team together to collect and donate as much as we can for our missionaries on this Give Day coming up the very beginning of September. So I'm gonna be giving you guys more challenges, more ideas of ways that you can raise. But right now, I want you to ask God what he wants you to do for his kingdom. You know, we might think as kids or even as adults sometimes that there's not a lot that we can do for God and we limit ourselves. But you know what, we serve a limitless God and he can do all things and he does all things well. Ask God, God, what do you want to do in me for BGMC? And you might be surprised at what he says. Now, I know you're also going to be surprised in this game because it's a game of Christmas concentration, but it has a little twist in it by way of somebody called Daryl the Distracted Llama. And you're going to see exactly what I mean in just a minute. Check this out.
The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story. Today's story is based on the book of Acts, chapter 17, starting with verse 16. We're jumping back into the story of Paul. We've heard a lot about him, and he's a really important guy. You know, we now call Paul one of the very first missionaries because he was one of the first ones to travel around from Jerusalem, then to Judea and Samaria, and then to what was considered the ends of the earth at that time, telling people about Jesus. And you know, life wasn't easy for Paul. I consider it to be kind of ironic since he persecuted Christians before he was saved, that he was very persecuted after he received salvation. Everywhere he went, people did not like to hear the good news that he was sharing. And a lot of times he was chased out of everywhere he was. We can read in Acts 17 that he was chased out of Thessalonica. Then he tried to escape to Berea and he was chased out of there. So much so that he had to get on a boat to, to travel all the way to Athens in Greece just to escape persecution at that time. But it was in Athens that he realized that he could share Jesus with other people by showing them and telling them things that they were already aware of, things that they already knew and were familiar with, and that he could tell them about Jesus through things that they already knew so they could understand him better. We're going to hear from kind of an unknown person in the Bible by the name of Damaris. She comes up in this historical book of Acts, and she's going to share her story with us today. Hi friends, Demarius here. You probably never heard of me. I'm not as royal as Esther or as famous as Mary, but God loved me and my friends so much that he sent someone very special to tell us about his son, Jesus. Now, one person that I'm sure you've heard of is my friend, Paul. I came to know Paul when he came to Athens to share the good news of Jesus Christ. We Athenians have always considered ourselves deeply religious. We make statues in honor of every god. Sun gods, moon gods, gods of the land, gods of the sea, gods of health and strength and, and even weather. We even made an altar to an unknown god. It seemed like the right thing to do. When Paul arrived in Athens, he went to visit the Jewish synagogue so he could tell the Jews and Greeks there about Jesus. He took time to speak with some people in the marketplace. Well. Paul's words about Jesus stirred up some people, like they had in the past. There was a group of really smart thinkers in Athens. They were interested in what Paul was saying, but they wanted to ask him some questions. So they brought Paul to a meeting of Areopagus, which was the high court of Athens, which was on top of a place called Mars Hill. They asked Paul, what is this new teaching you're giving us? You have some strange ideas that we have never heard about. We'd like to know what they mean. We wanted to know more about Paul's message. We wanted to understand. We thought we had heard of every God, but Paul was talking about a God that we hadn't heard about before. You can read our history in the book of Acts chapter 17, and we can read what Paul said to answer our questions in verse 22. Here's what Paul said to them next. People of Athens, I see that you are very religious in every way. As I walked around, I carefully looked at the things you worshiped, and I even found an altar to an unknown God written on it. So you don't know what you are worshiping. Now I am going to tell you about this unknown God. He is the God who made the world. He made everything in it. He is the Lord of heaven and earth. He does not live in temples built by human hands. He is not served by human hands. He doesn't need anything. Instead, he himself gives life and breath to all people. He also gives them everything else they have. Paul was speaking to us about our own writers and our own altars. We didn't even know it, but our own writers had actually written things that were true about God. And even though these writers didn't know God yet, some of their writers had written, we are his children. 
Paul told them that that was true. We are his children. God is alive and real and not just some statue. Paul explained that God had called everyone everywhere to follow him and that God had proven this by raising Jesus from the dead. When we heard these things, some people made fun of Paul, but I thought my heart would explode. This God knew me and he created me and I could know him. He loved me so much that he sent his son Jesus to die for me. For the first time, I heard and understood the truth, the good news, and I became a follower of Christ, along with my friend Dionysus and many other Greeks and Jews. Paul continued to share the good news and the love of Jesus with the people of Athens because he knew this, you can help others know Jesus. Just like Paul, I now share the good news with everyone I meet. It's just too important to keep to myself. I love how Damaris came to understand that unknown God by Paul sharing Jesus with her in ways that she already knew and understood. You know, we learn that the Athenian people, they were very godly. They just weren't believing in the true gods. They were very religious. They wanted to know God. They wanted to honor him, but they didn't understand who he was. And so by using the knowledge that they already had and the deep-rooted religious beliefs that they had in their hearts, Paul showed them that they could really trust in the one true God and that they could know him. He wasn't unknown. He wasn't just a faceless statue that they were praying to and building up. They could really know him. And you know what? We can be like Paul. We can share with people who Jesus is without using any fancy words or things that they don't understand. We don't have to know the Bible front to back to be able to share Jesus Christ and the power of his life and his message with those around us. And that could be as simple as just a smile to somebody when we see them and just letting God's spirit and his love flow through us. It can just be a kind word or encouragement to build someone up. And that person could be in your very own family, a sibling that you treat with love and respect when maybe that's not the way you're feeling, but you show them who Jesus is by the way that you act. You know, there's people all around us that are hungry to know an unknown God, that they know in their spirit, you guys, and the depth of who they are, that there's something missing in their life. And you have that missing piece. You have that piece of the puzzle that they are yearning for. And you can share that gift of life that they will never, ever, might never even know about unless they hear it from you. You know, right now it's kind of hard to invite someone to church to come along with you. It's kind of a strange time. Normally we would be inviting kids to kids church with us and always inviting people to come to New Hope to hear about Jesus. But you know what? I love the challenge right now that God gives us to just share our faith from our own heart and just say, this is what Jesus Christ has done in me. This is how he's changed my life and changed my family. My daughter, Audra, who is five, was talking about some of our neighbors who know about God, but they don't know him. And she thought that maybe we should ask Pastor Jeff to come with us and share the good news of Jesus Christ with those neighbors. And I said, well, Audra, what would you have Pastor say? And she went through um, the basics of faith, just saying, I would tell them, I would have Pastor Jeff, or we call him Uncle Jeff. I would tell Pastor Jeff that um, he needs to say, that they just need to pray and believe in Jesus, that they need to trust in him and give their heart to him and ask for him to forgive their sin. And I said, you know, Audra, I think you've got it. And you don't need Pastor Jeff to come because you can share the good news of Jesus Christ. We make it really complicated, guys, but it's actually really simple. And when we give people that missing piece that they're ready to put into their heart, they're ready for that. They're ready to receive. And so right now, I'm just going to pray over us, adults and kids, that he would put people into our life, whether it's a neighbor, whether it's someone in the grocery store, someone at work, just someone we come into contact with, that we could help give that missing piece, that piece of life to them to hear and know Jesus. Let's pray. God, I just thank you so much, God, that we have the knowledge of who you are, that we know the power of your resurrection, God, that we have fellowship with you and your suffering, Jesus, just like your word says, that God, we know you. 
And I pray, God, that we could share you with people around us, that we could share Jesus, that we could share the breath of life with those around us, God, that are yearning to know you. I just pray, God, that you would put people into our life for such a time as this, for a purpose, God, and a plan, whether those be kids or adults or grandmas and grandpas. I pray that you would use our NH kids to just speak out with boldness, God, and just speak from their heart about who you are, that you are real and you are alive. And just like Damaris, that their hearts and lives would be changed forever. Jesus, we love you so much and we are honored to be a part of what you're doing, God. I pray, Jesus, it would be our prayer and our mission to make you famous, God, and to show other people the love that you have to send your own son, Jesus Christ, to die for them. Help us be able to share that good news. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I love you guys so much. And shh, we have something really exciting for you coming up in the coming weeks. I know you're probably looking for some excitement and I am too. So listen up, be watching our Facebook page, checking your email because we have some good things coming from Pastor Anna, AKA Damaris and I. So we'll see you guys soon and we love you so much. Oh, also remember to register for our family service on Sundays if you hadn't, because that has been a rocking good time. We were rolling laughing last Sunday, so we would love to have you guys there. Have a great night and see you soon.